the next one is aseptic hand wash okay what is aseptic hand wash now here you use not the regular soap you use antiseptic soap solution okay uh, and apply to the wet skin and here you uh, wash at least for 60 seconds one minute okay and then dry it with this and then you can dry with disposable paper so this is aseptic hand wash okay and where do we use aseptic hand wash techniques these are the procedures wherein carefully controlled environment okay like this is outside operation theater such as im injections iv injections okay so after hand wash after using that antiseptic soap solution or alcohol hand rub here we use barrier and the barrier would be gloves and it is non-sterile gloves not the sterile ones the non-sterile ones okay then we call it as aseptic hand technique okay now here also the patient's skin needs some disinfection with short acting disinfectant okay so here the skin preparation is required okay again the environment should be clean and disinfected instrument should be disinfected with high level of disinfectant not the regular one okay so this is these are the this is it is aseptic technique okay now what is a surgical asepsis and sterile technique and how, where, where is it used in NICU? We are not talking about the OT operation theater procedures. We are talking about the NICU. So where are they used? Is a surgical asepsis or sterile technique? Here, we, we use preoperatively. Uh, here it is written preoperatively. Surgical scrub and, we, and the time required is three to five minutes. Okay, based upon the manufacturer's recommended guidelines. Okay, so here... The aim is to remove all transient flora and substantially reducing the residential flora, okay, on to the healthcare worker, on the hands of the healthcare worker to decrease the cross-contamination, okay. Now, here the antiseptic agent which is used is broad-spectrum antimicrobial agent, okay, and which acts rapidly and persists on the skin for several hours. That is the aim, okay, the, that is the agent which has to be used here. And where do we use in an ICU, this sterile technique? Here, we use in inserting the central line. The central line like umbilical line, pick lines, okay? Any arterial lines or small surgeries, okay? Or exchange transfusions, which we do. These are all sterile techniques and aseptic techniques or not aseptic techniques. These are as uh, sterile techniques in an ICU, okay? So, here... Uh, what is the agent which is used? Chlorhexidine with with 61% of alcohol. Chlorhexidine in 61% of alcohol. This is the guideline. Okay. If at all you are using. Uh, what is a pick line? Pick line is peripherally inserted central line. Okay. We access the peri uh, peripheral, uh, any peripheral line, a peripheral IV line. And then from there we insert into the central central means in uh, near the what do you say near to the heart okay that is called peripherally inserted central line so that we can we central lines see peripheral lines we cannot give few in concentration of like tp and if you are given total parental nutrition few concentrations we cannot give so such concentrations can be directly delivered into the central line so we insert a line which is going to the center, peripherally inserted central line that is also used in cases wherein we expect prolonged stay for the neonate such as in preterm babies 28 weeker okay when we expect a prolonged stay, stay and we need to give long-term tpn or long-term antibiotics in such cases we secure that peripheral inserted pick line hope i i you understood okay uh, mr uh, no, dr amit right Okay. Then uh, here we use barrier and that barrier is coming back to the sterile technique. We use barrier and the barrier is sterile PPE. Okay. The sterile PPE is the barrier used. Now here the patient need, skin needs to be treated with disinfectant, long acting disinfectant such as chlorhexidine or pyridine etc. And it has to be properly sterile. Okay. And we know, right, we have to go from 
central to the peripheral. That area should be clean in such a way that it should be from central to the peripheral. Okay. Never from peripheral to the central. Then environment should be a sterile field. Okay. It should be a sterile field. And instrument and equipments, whatever we use, it should be sterile. Okay. Th these are not the in disinfected ones. Okay. So this is called ster sterile technique used in NIC. So uh, these are the hand wash uh, I mean, so steps of hand wash. And the most important of all is though we are using non-sterile or sterile gloves, they are not the substitute of hand wash. It must be done before putting the gloves and after the removal. So that is the most important uh, thing you should, which should be kept in your mind. Okay, you can never use them as a substitute. Okay, so next, next. To decrease the cross contamination, we have to clip our nails. Okay, do not wear nail varnish. Okay, in an ICU, these are the minimum basic steps, and this is the universal standard precautions which has to be carried out by any healthcare uh, healthcare visitor or worker. Okay, including doctors. So, so do not wear false nails. No bracelets. No watches. Okay. No additional rings. Okay, these have to be these have to be removed prior to entering entering the NICU prior to hand wash. Okay, this has to be this is a strict no no in NICU. Okay. Now, contact precautions. This as we are specifically learning about Staphylococcus aureus, contact precautions or the barrier precautions has to be taken in cases wherein we are suspecting. MRSC or visa means uh, VRSA or visa. Okay, so we isolate those babies. We keep them in separate rooms. There would be a separate hand wash area uh, prior to the entry room. Okay, and a one is to one ratio of nursing station and nurse should be allocated in one is to one ratio means one patient, one sister. And if at all uh, you are suspecting similar infection. A similar resistant organism, then we can cohabit them. Okay, cohabit them with proper distancing. Okay, that is what we discussed prior, right? At least a uh, distance of four feet. Okay, then you can cohabit and sister can uh, sim, same sister can take care of both the babies. Okay, but then it should be isolated. It should be isolated from the other healthy babies. Okay, then we use. These are the contact uh, precautions. One is washing hands, wearing the gowns, and then wear the gloves. Okay. So we don't, we hand wash, we don't this equipment prior to room entry. And then after our, means whatever we have finished our work, then remove prior to room exit. Okay. They have to be removed prior to room exit. So this is called as, and as I told you, single room is single room or cohorting. Okay. It has to be practiced in these cases. Now, what is nurse to patient ratio? Adequate staff is mandatory. Okay. Hand wash area should be there. And normally in nurseries, we give one staff. One staff for at least six to eight infants. Okay. Intermediary, intermediary nursing is uh, wherein uh, they are high risk group, but then they are not isolation. They are not like... Um, infected babies so high risk groups in such cases we give one is to three ratios but if it is multi-drug resistant organism then it should be one is to one or if it is infected one infected babies with similar organism or similar susceptible organism then one is two babies can be taken so this was what i was discussing okay now this is nurse to patient ratio now, how do we, sir? What do we do? Surveillance. This is environmental surveillance. What? How do we do? And how frequently do we do? So, room and room air has to be cultured. Okay, this, uh, these, these are the different things which has to be cultured frequently to know what is the endemicity of the organisms and which which drugs we have to means what is the drug which we, antibiotic which we have to give to the, to our babies okay what is the endemicity of our organisms in the nicu to know that we do this frequently and how frequently room hair has to be cultured at least weekly surfaces 
has to be cultured twice weekly. Okay, we take swabs from surfaces. Okay, swabs from uh, swabs from the surfaces such as any warmer, incubator, trolleys, or laminar flow. If you are using so such surfaces, we we culture them twice weekly. Then any equipment again twice weekly means ambu bags, masks, regularly used things. We have to. This is called mock drill. Okay, this is called mock drill, and we go sudden. We go suddenly without informing the sisters or the healthcare worker and take these swabs from there. Okay, so to know how good is our our contact precautions or hand wash precautions are being taken, then liquids if uh, liquids like water from the uh, humidifier okay water from the um, wash wash area every twice week means to fortnightly every fortnightly it has to be or any uh, liquids like uh, this also like us um, our uh, hand rubs also we have to uh, we have to culture from them okay so that that is how we maintain a proper surveillance of the area and we know what and what are the organisms which are endemic and what are the precautions further precautions which we can take to help reduce the uh, endemicity of those organisms